Welcome back to the pile. Hope you enjoyed your stay in the end phase because we are here back with another video. And I know the first thing that you're obviously thinking of right now is, huh, that's a weird haircut, Porfa. See, having thick, long, curly hair is a lot of work. And um, three in one shower gel, that'll do me just fine, dude. So I hope you're excited for season five of Farfa. I'm, I'm really sure that this arc is the one that'll really bring the franchise out from, uh, from failing. Today's video is going to be about a small little, I don't want to say scam per se, but a super, super misleading uh, eBay thing that has been going on for years actually. And I remember when I was a lot younger, I was uh, trying to buy a deck and I would see on eBay these ready to play decks. And uh, <laughs> let me tell you something about ready to play. So I went and purchased for myself this 12 pounds, really cheap, super good deal, by the way, 12 pounds ready to play Salmon Great deck. And I was wondering, 12 pounds for a Salmon Great core, that's crazy. Ready to play? Wow. Well, let's uh, try and really understand what our definition of ready to play here is, because there's two copy of Heat Leo. I mean, that's good. That's two copies of Heat Leo, that's the standard ratio. But there's no Salmon Great Wolf, but there is a Doolittle Chimera. Now, I don't know just exactly what your definition of a ready-to-play Salmon Great deck is, but for me, I would I would hope that there would be a copy of Sunlight Wolf and, you know, more than five extra deck cards. So today's video is basically a little experiment and we're going to take this deck to locals and see just how well we can do. Yes, I'm going to be attending locals in a couple of hours and vlogging myself <laughs> playing <laughs> Ready to play Salomon Great. Now this video is just to really make you aware of some of the things on eBay. I think that for £12, like you're better off just buying three structure decks and investing a little bit more money and you basically have a much better deck than what's available currently in this package deal. I find it to be, personally in my opinion, a little bit predatory and kind of taking advantage of people's lack of knowledge who may be completely new to the game because I personally was in that position five years ago when I was trying to play this game. I would find a tournament ready, ready to play deck as advertised, and it would just have absolutely nothing of value in it at all. But anyway, I just wanted to quickly give you a couple of small updates about life and uh, existing. The most important thing, of course, is that I am now sponsored by Card Market, so that's awesome. I'll always be leaving a link to Card Market in my description, and you can see it in my YouTube banner and stuff. Henceforth, I don't have an affiliate link or anything at all. You literally just go to Card Market. It's the best that you will find anywhere in Europe for buying singles online. The second point that I want to bring up is that, you know, you're probably thinking to yourself, huh, you haven't uploaded a video in like a month or something. Where have you been, dude? Well, to tell you the truth, I've just really enjoyed Twitch streaming more because I find that it's a safer platform to be in. Some of you might or may not be aware of the YouTube problems that have been going on and uh, this whole kids content and things like that. Basically, if you make content specifically for children on YouTube, you're going to have no ad revenue, basically. So Yugi Tubers currently are actually put in a very precarious position where we don't really make content for children, but it's kid friendly. And obviously Yu-Gi-Oh! is considered technically a kid's game. Now, I don't know if any of you guys can explain to a seven-year-old the concept of missing the timing, <laughs> but in my opinion, this channel is kid-friendly, but not for kids. Like, I don't expect a child to watch my videos and be like, according to a hyperdimensional calculation, part of designers is a three of when considering that there's a 33% chance to open offsetting the 11% deficit in consistency when run at two copies rather than three. Therefore, it is mathematically and statistically sound to play part of designers at a three of yes. There's no seven-year-old watching my YouTube videos saying that. So basically, what I'm saying is that it's a really tough and weird situation to be a YouTuber right now, and the future of YouTubing for people who make kids content is uh, looking a little bit bleak right now. Now, I'm not saying I'm quitting or anything, but you know, we will definitely have to see. And for me personally, live streaming is just far more enjoyable and rewarding than making videos. Like I prefer live streaming to, you know, hey guys, top 10 side deck cards. At number 10, we have Maxi. And at number one, we have Electric Virus. Honorable shoutouts to Bean Soldier. I understand that some of you might think my comedy is nothing more than loud equals funny and cheap zoom techniques, but let me tell you, that is a art form. I am super proud of how far I've come. Anyway, 
I think first of all, what we'll do is we'll open up this pack here and just see exactly what our deck will be consisting of today. Let's uh, take a little peep here. I mean, packaging and stuff is fine. No uh, real issues with that. Arrive promptly on time. So as you guys know, we have two copies of uh, Salmon Great Heat Leo. Understandable, have a nice format. Uh, one Bay Lynx, of course, you know, <laughs> just just the one copy, one copy of Mirage Stalio, Flame Administrator, you know, you see, you get, do you guys see the uh, <laughs> the synergy here? One copy of Doolittle Chimera for our extra deck. Yeah, so, um, ready to play. Yeah, just uh, six copies, six cards all together, uh, reasonable, all right, okay, well, on to the main deck, Gazelle. Uh, well, at least they, call it, they <laughs> included Gazelle, you know, like, I'm... I'm glad we got that far. Uh, two copies of Spinny. Okay, right. So far, so good. We have two copies of Foxy. All right. I mean, this is not looking too bad. I mean, this is kind of actually a real ratio we've got here. And now we've got Salmon Great Mirror, a <laughs> level two cyber monster. So this is where it's going to be tricky because these are a bunch of Salmon Great cards you guys probably haven't ever, never even read before. I think I've seen people play this before. It's not terrible. Like, you can pitch Spinny and Special Summon him and then... You know, so you go, go Bay Lynx and then go from there, like, you can do some stuff. Two copies of Falco. Alright, like, you guys know how Falco works, it resets a card and bounces a card to special summon itself. <laughs> okay! Now we're getting into some, uh, real nonsense. Uh, two copies of Salmon Great Beat Bison, boys, Beat Bison. Two Jack Jaguar, understandable. Uh, two copies of Salmon Great Fowl. Uh, two Foxer. Wolvi. A monster that was Link Summon using this as a material cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects for the rest of that turn. That turn? That's terrible. Paro, I think this is the guy that lets you uh, just, just scum people in time, right? Yeah, like tributes itself to like gain 2,000 life points. Okay, yeah, that might come up today. Uh, a copy of Raccoon. When your salad monster is targeted for an attack by your opponent's monster, send this from your hand to the grave and target... Those two monsters that would battle gain life equal to the attack of the monster. Also, the target monster cannot be destroyed by battle this turn. Man, really convoluted stuff, but I think this is like a weird battle fader. Okay, now we're getting into some real crazy territory. True King Angnamazud. Yes, destroy two fires and special summon him. All right, okay, yeah, well, I mean, that's that's going to come in handy, of course. A fencing fire ferret. Oh my god, isn't this from like 2012 or something? A beast level 4, 1700 beats it, very nice. We've got a copy of Mole. If you link someone this turn, you can special this from your hand. To your zone, a link monster points to. If you control no monsters, you can banish this card from your grave, target five summon great cards again, shove them. Mole actually isn't aw uh, awful. I think he's like the best one that isn't like the standard. Oh boy. We're playing the Salmon Great Emerald Eagle. We have the ritual spell and the ritual uh, monster himself. We've got the one copy of Circle, of course, and two field <laughs> spells. Two will. Okay, this is nice. This is nice. I like that. Uh, there's Link Bound. It's a quick play spell. You can target a Link you control or in your grave return to the extra. And if you do draw cards equal to its Link rating, then place cards in your hands to the bottom of the deck in any order equal to the number of cards you drew. Ah, okay, 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 okay. That's cool. I like it. We have an equip spell, Salmon Great Claw. Okay, boys, we're playing Claw now. Equip only to a salad. The Equip Monster can't be destroyed by battle or card effects, and if it attacks a defense monster, it's like piercing. If the Equip Monster is a solid link uh, that was linked to someone using monster with the same name, during each battle phase, it can make attacks on uh, up to its link rating on monsters. Very good, very good. Okay, that's actually not terrible. <laughs> like, a bunch of the Salmon Great cards aren't awful. It's just like, why would you play them over, you know, the standard? So, two copies of Roar. Salmon Great re uh, re Gift. Uh, this one is like pitch a salad and draw a card or something, right? However, we're basically never going to pull that off because our only Link monster that can ever be reincarnated is Baylinx and Helio. <laughs> so, two copies of Rage. Break off Trap Hole. When a Link monster is linked, someone destroy all monsters on the field that are not linked. Very good, very good. And then we've got a copy of Backfire Street. Okay, okay. If a face-up fire monster you control is destroyed and sent to the grave, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Well, this is going to be cited out every game. Well, technically, this isn't, you know, cited, but sure. All right, well, there you go. That's how that's how dreadful this main deck is. Uh, the extra deck is basically non-existent. So we're going to head over, on over to Locals now and see just how bad this thing is going to function.
first game of the day is against Pendulum, and, well, you can see my hand here of uh, Will, which is uh, pretty good, and uh, for going second, I suppose that's going to help versus Pendulum. He doesn't really have much here. He attempts to activate the effect of Chronograph, which um, ended up technically being illegal because he pre-sided, or he was sided before the local started, and apparently he took out Time Gazer. And so that Chronograph isn't able to do anything. I, I guess technically the correct procedure is like a game loss, but I mean, that seems a little bit excessive for the local level. So I, I don't really know what we do here. We kind of just like keep playing. I mean, what else can you do? Uh, he just uh, normal summons a Dark Worm. I think he gets the effect and proceeds to do some kind of a Pendulum Summon with uh, a <laughs> Circle and Servant not really having enough spells at all, actually, to uh, trigger the Servant in the scale. So from here, he kind of thinks for a bit, doesn't really know what to do. Um, tries to attempt to summon a Heratic Seal. <laughs> um, that's uh, not enough dragons uh, were found. Error 404. So, yeah, what do you do in Pendulum? You make Electromite, of course. And I think he just sends a Mighty Master without really, like, having much of a follow-up for it, I, I suppose. Um, I guess here you can, like... Pop the scale and hope he draws something, which I think he does. Yeah, he pops the chrono and adds him back. Uh, regardless, he ends on Secret Village, which uh, he's main decking. Two copy, uh, two spell counters on the servant as well. So uh, you see, I top deck Mole or something here. Uh, my play is to basically just try and heat Leo, which I think I have enough extenders, quote unquote, for that to resolve. So Falco into Bailings into the field spell. Can't use the field spell quite yet. Um, but I can dump um, <laughs> Foxy for Mir here, and then Foxy can dump. A mole to uh, Sepesha itself out and pop the field spell. There's two ways to go about this. I could have just popped the scale or left the field spell up for him, and that way I would be able to just lock him under scales if I'm able to clear his board. Um, but I think that th that might have actually been the better uh, play uh, was to just like leave the secret village up, but uh, that, that ends up not happening. Maybe uh, it's, it's what I should have done, but regardless, I use the soul charge effect of Will, which uh, summons three monsters, as I have a link three on the field sum summoned with its own name. And I uh, go into do a little chimera, boys. Do a little chimera. This allows me to uh, boost my guy high enough to uh, attack over the servant, and uh, my heat leo reduces the attack of Electromite to like 600 or something, uh, whatever Mir is in the graveyard. So yeah, some maths here happens. Attack over the servant which uh, is uh, lower enough, I think, as Chimera is technically 14, but 19 with the boost from itself. And uh, I think that's a rage I set there, yeah. Uh, so now he's got three counters on the Servant after top decking a Pot of Desires, which I think it might have been in my best interest to pop this in the standby phase, or at least on the Resolution of Desires. But I figured that I kind of have to just gamble on him summoning the Jackal from deck. Otherwise, if I pop the Servant immediately, He's got four cards in hand, he just activates two scales and then Pendulum summons two or three monsters. And that could just like be game, because like I, I really cannot out a uh, Mighty Master. So it's basically like a high roll and hope I get lucky and that he doesn't summon the Mighty Master from deck and instead it goes to the Jackal. Thankfully he goes for Jackal, so that's like the only way I could have won that game. Um, he goes into the battle phase with Jackal and uh, attacks the Heat Leo, forgetting that Doolittle is uh, giving a little uh, boost to my uh, Heat Leo there. So that's... Uh, Understandable. Uh, end phase rage, pop the remaining amount of his cards, etc., and we're good to go. I think I uh, uh, top deck uh, a, a gazelle off the foxy, and that basically allows me to just pop off, dude, with my flame administrator and my special summon gazelle, sending Spinny to special summon him back, and then, uh, yeah, there we go. So that was uh, game one. Pretty uh, convincing, kind of, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if convincing is the right word, but sure. Um, we're moving on to game two here. He chooses to let me start, probably noticing and realizing that my deck does absolutely nothing. And I start with basically just a Jaguar summon into Bailinks. I will the Jaguar back and then make a Flame Administrator. <laughs> just in the hopes of uh, getting my guy in the graveyard so that I can Link Bound, by the way, send a Bailinks to, uh, to the extra and draw a card, so I put back my double field spell, which, you know, there's two copies in this ready-to-play eBay deck, because two field spells is a good number. I was basically just hoping to draw Rage. I mean, there's nothing else I could draw there, so... Will Flame Administrator pass it is, boys? He scales up with the Donut and Mighty Master. Pendulum summons a Jackal, activates Secret Village, and gives his guy some counters. So he actually had Dragon Shrine Foolish in his hand, which I question why he didn't start with that rather than Pendulum summoning immediately, but is what it is. 
I go for my turn here after he attacks over my uh, Flame Administrator, rip. Uh, I go into uh, Bailing here off the normal summoned uh, Spinny, I think. I try to bring back Spinny, he negates with Jackal. This allows me to special summon the Jaguar with its own effect. And then I use Will after making a Link 2 monster, and this thankfully gives me enough ways to put a Heat Leo on the field. So I'm able to now spin his scale, and then I can basically just like set up and pray that I, uh, you know, survive a turn. I set the Roar, um, and I have the Bailings and Grave to protect my, what's his name, uh, Heat Leo. Because really my win condition at this point is basically just like survive a turn and then like try and like... Uh, uh, spin another skill, just control the board, because I did top deck Roar here, so I'm in a decent position. He declares an attack with the Jackal King, I'm able to protect with Bailinx. Uh, Bailinx isn't an activated effect, it's a continuous effect, so for that reason you are able to use it and uh, not be vulnerable to the Jackal King. So I was safe there, protecting my guy. Uh, he doesn't really have much else really either, so just a couple of counters on the Jackal, so I top deck Gazelle, boy, normal summon the Gazelle. Uh, dump a card, he Jackal King negates, and I'm able to chain the roar that I had on the previous turn. And from here, yeah, you just kind of uh, popping off, boys. I think I send my Spinny here. Yeah, I dump Spinny here, and then I'm able to just, uh, you know, uh, relink my guy with the field spell, because he doesn't control any spellcasters now. I spin a scale, Stalio, bring out Beat Bison, the best monster in Salmon Great, the absolute king. And he's not able to activate any spells because he's locked under his own secret village. Uh, he does bring out the Dark Worm. He top decks the Dark Worm. So I guess he can like normal summon and, you know, <laughs> make Exiton or something. He does have the Destrudo, but I have the Roar for that. So I'm basically hoping that he doesn't have any kind of uh, follow-up at this point. Otherwise, I'd be pretty uh, boopered. And yeah, he doesn't have anything. I think he tries to make a Triple Burst, which uh, <laughs> that's illegal. Now on to the next match, boys, Dinos. Uh, if that was a convincing 2-0 win for you, then uh, it's going to be a bit of a reverse sweep here. This game was disgusting. Like, I just, I cannot, like, yeah, I just get absolutely demolished. Uh, I uh, go for Mirror, uh, Dumping Mirror, or no, I, I Normal Summon and then Special Foul and then Summon ba uh, Bailing to get the Field Spell, uh, Summon the other Mirror, bring out my Foxy, and then I try to illegally summon my uh, Stalio, not realizing that Mir is a level 2 monster. You know, it's, I don't know what a Mir technically is. I think it's a fox of sorts. Me and my uh, zoology just assumed that um, it was level 3. Because all the foxes are level 3. So my bad. Uh, we do catch it though, so it's fine. Uh, I think he like end phase DD crows my bailings. So, <laughs> not my one-off bailings. <laughs> That's gone forever, dude. <laughs> yeah, so he's got Overraptor and uh, Desires. He normal summons the Overraptor. I think he dumps like uh, Kurtalos. Oh no, he like uh, adds the Pankratops to his hands instead. Uh, dumps a Miscellaneousaurus. And now he's able to just like special the Pankratop. And I mean, what do you really do here? Like Dino's uh, 26 a beater. Like I don't, th if anyone summons a Pankratops against this deck, I think that might actually just be game, dude. Like what does this deck do against the Pankratops? <laughs> no one knows. He's got the, uh, what's his name? Tyranno Ultimate Conductor. I can't play and do anything because... I don't, I don't even know, like, I don't even think a Gazelle top deck would really work at this point because he would just book it, so... Yep, that's, uh, th that was awful. That was, uh, that was real dreadful stuff, so sad if true. Moving on to the second game here. I mean, it's not much better. I, uh, I let him go first because he's playing Dino and I assume he can't really do much. Uh, I've got a Wolvi in my hand, so you see me here, like, just reading Wolvi. <laughs> Like, I don't know what Wolvie does. Like, I still honestly couldn't tell you what it does. Uh, I don't remember. It's so forgettable and, like, terrible. But anyway, uh, he's got a token on the field. There, there is technically a token on my side of the field at some point. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess he doesn't have tokens or didn't. I, I, I don't know why. Um, was I expected to be the one who, bring, who brought the tokens? Bro, I'm, a, I'm playing an eBay deck, okay? It wasn't supplied for me. But anyway, Bailinx into uh, Stalio uh, off the top from the hand there when I normal summon the Wolvi. Um, I get the field spell here. I summon the Spinny. Now, at this point, what would be a really like fair play and like a way to like actually do something here would be if I was to relink my Bailinx. I'd be able to protect my Stalio from the Pankratops to uh, pop. But I only have one copy of Bailings in my deck, so I'm not able to protect my guy there. So that's really sad. So, I mean, what do I do? I mean, I don't know. I guess I just play into it. Like, 
No point in just setting some guys doing nothing. I dump a bunch of back row, of which none of them do anything in this situation, other than, like, I guess, like, Roar, maybe. Uh, probably should have just shotgun Roar on the first card he activates, like the Miscellaneousaurus. Uh, I, I don't know. I think I just let it go through. He uh, normal summons the Overaptor. Uh, banish, uh, sorry, special summons the Overaptor from his deck using the Miscellaneousaurus, triggering Rex, summoning the Tornado. <laughs> My break off trap hole currently is not live. Um, I roar the Tornado Dragon. He double evolution pills for Tyranno, and that, sir, is damage. On to the next game here for uh, <laughs> Luna Light Orcust. <laughs> My play is Mirror Claw. Pass turn. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know. Um, I also forgot my second battery pack at home, so I'm sorry about this. So, uh, oh my God. So I'm uh, neither do I, to be honest. Excuse I have a response. Special Salmon Great Power. Oh, Specials itself when you declare an attack. <laughs> no, it's only if you tribute it. No, 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 two. Six. Punch. Effect. Stop the attack. Doubles to 6k. Swing over. Vector. This to defense. Swing over again. And then Can't be destroyed by battle. You still take all the fucking damage. But you still take the damage. <laughs> It destroys yours as well. Yeah, well, I don't care. <laughs> My fencing fire ferret is going to the graveyard. Effect of Thunderbird, target this. What does this do? Target, if, if this card is destroying sent to grave, target a face up monster your opponent controls, destroy it. Oh no, never mind. Effect of Thunderbird, target that. Rip. Please tell me you pass. Oh! Okay. That's basically it for the three of my matches, and my final match was against Abyss Actor. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any footage from that whatsoever because I stupidly forgot to take my second battery pack of my camera to the, to the locals itself, uh, but I managed to 2 all Abyss Actors. I, I couldn't tell you really what happened. There's a bit of a, like a little bit of a back and forth. He didn't open very well. Uh, the entire gimmick i suppose of abyss actors that it forces you to pop their cards which tri when you pop their cards it triggers and gives them plus tens and insane things like that um but heat leo doesn't destroy cards it spins so i'm able to just constantly you know spin his scales i reset i recycle the heat leo with like a link bound and then make another heat leo to spin another scale and then i can do the same again next turn i roar something i set the roar again after relinking um, and then eventually Salmon Great Gift ends up drawing me my entire deck, which by the way, Salmon Great Gift is amazing in this, since there's just a million Salmon Great monsters, like Foxer and Mir and Mole and Raccoon and Wolvey, Beat Bison was, was those two copies of. So I'm able to just draw these rubbish ones and then just discard them and draw two every turn, even on his turn when while he's semi-bricking and, you know, not being able to play because of my roar or whatever. Um... And eventually I draw Gazelle and just kill him. Uh, game two, I don't think was really much different either. Just kind of a similar situation. Uh, Heat Leo OP, I suppose. Um, he obviously didn't open very well, otherwise he wouldn't be losing to an eBay deck. And yeah, there's not really much else I can say about that one. And of course, the most fundamental aspect of attending a locals is of course going to be the prize support. And for 2-2 as a record, one OTS 11. One pack of Chaos Impact. So, let's see what we can pull here. Is it going to be some Marine Cess cards? It's Crusher Run. A Man Strong, the artifact basically, but monkey version. Watt Train. A Jelly Cannon. A Crystal Heart. I think I have like seven of these now, that's great. And no copies of Blue Time. Uh, a Seraphim Papillon. Dances with Beasts. Skip the Unchained, and a Marine says Crown Tail. And the OTS, can we pull an Ultimate Rare, boys? We have Fortune Lady Water, a Boot Up Soldier Dynamo, and a Super Alter Guys Kung Query. DZ, if you're watching this video, please DM me. Thank you. So all in all, my conclusion is that I really wanted to come away from this and say this was a massive scam. I genuinely wanted to come away from this and be like, do not buy these decks, there's a waste of money. And to tell you the truth, I still think it is. Like, you should not be buying these pre-made tournament-ready decks, so, so to say. A complete waste of time uh, and money. You should be buying singles that you need from deck profiles you see online, on YouTube, etc., etc. 
and things that you've tested yourself and getting those because these things are more expensive than if you just bought if you had just bought the structure deck. So if you do want to play Salmon Great, just buy three copies of the structure deck. That itself, you can probably find a bargain deal of all three of them for like, you know, $25 or something like that. Yeah, the eBay thing, I can tell you, is not good. Do not buy your decks from tournament ready eBay sellers. I know it might be tempting as a new player and as someone who hasn't played this game before and to maybe watch this video and be like, but Farfa, you went two and two with an eBay deck, which was the same record as someone who was playing a full power genuine Salmon Great deck of the locals. But that's besides the point. These decks are really just put together as the scraps. It, it's like the people who are making and selling these decks are taking the best cards from the structure deck, like the multiple copies of Gazelle or the Ash Blossom reprint, for example, and they are selling those off and they're just giving you the rubbish left over in the structure like that nobody wants like all the foxers and mirrors and wolvies and bite bisons um and then making a deck out of it uh for like you know 12 13 pounds it sounds cheap but really for the the, the actual value of the cards you're getting it's completely like a ripoff so in conclusion uh I had fun with this experiment. I definitely won't be putting myself through this torture again, but it was enjoyable regardless. Thank you everyone for watching. I am a full-time streamer, by the way, so it's very important that you watch me on Twitch, which I have all my social media links in the description down below. We have a Discord server where you can ask rulings, talk to the community, join in in discussions with me and stuff. I have a Twitter page as well, where I regularly post funny memes and random musings about Yu-Gi-Oh and stuff as well. And I put a bunch of updates and things uh, that are very op uh, important uh, on my Twitter and my Facebook page. Thank you everyone for watching. Remember that this video is sponsored by Card Market. So big shout out to them. If you want to buy singles and you want to play cards and play Yu-Gi-Oh, buy them from Card Market if you're European. And until next time, adios. Thank you.